Welcome back to MVM. Today we're going to be taking a look at the game Shadow Planet coming soon from Galacta. This is based on a popular graphic novel that takes place on a moon that is known as the Shadow Planet here in the game. You're going to be taking on the role of explorers who are investigating a space wreck that disappeared under mysterious circumstances. When you touch down on the moon, you realize that not everything is as it seems and the game quickly turns into a survival game where your goal is to complete your hidden objective. Because on this planet, there are two mysterious forces at work. The alien force, which can possess people and is driven by a need to escape the moon and infect the greater galaxy. And you have the guardian, an ancient force that is designed to keep the alien from escaping at any cost. These two forces are going to work out their objectives by taking over the characters that are investigating this moon. And yes, that means you could be one of these two forces. The other players at the table are astronauts trying to do their best to just escape this situation. Now you're gonna see the board set up here. It doesn't matter how many players you have playing, you're going to use all six characters. And you'll see those six character cards represented over here. The board itself is split into four separate locations with each location housing a few characters at the start of the game. Off to the side, you're going to keep the characters' decks of cards. These are communal decks in a way. You're going to be able to take control of different characters at different points of the game and use their decks, either to build those decks out to become better or to actually weaken those decks over the course of the game. And I'll talk about why you want to do that, but that's actually one of the key things you're trying to do in the game is strengthen up the characters that you wish to control and weaken the characters that other players want to use because there is a teamwork aspect here but remember that some characters are going to have their own special objective and these objectives are given out at the start of the game there will always be an alien and that's set aside and shuffled in no matter the player count but there might not always be that guardian force you don't actually know so you're going to shuffle those all together and deal one to each player each player is going to have a player mat in front of them. And of course, this is just a prototype component here in front of me, but it's going to store all of your information, including the character you're currently controlling and your overall objective. On the back, there's different strategies for the different types of characters you might be playing, the alien, the guardian, or just becoming an astronaut. And these three forces are all gonna be controlling three different dials in the game. You have the countdown dial, which is going to indicate how close the ship is to launching away. If you're not back to your ship in time, you're gonna get stranded there for five years. That's how long it takes for the ship to come back around. There is a threat track that represents the threats on the moon. If that becomes too high, you are overwhelmed. And then you have the repair track. If you have not repaired the ship by the time you try to leave, you can't leave. You have to have fully repaired your landing vessel first. So these three dials can be manipulated by the different forces for different goals. The alien wants to overcome all of the astronauts by increasing that threat track. They want that to be as high as possible. The guardian doesn't want to let anyone leave the planet because somebody might be infected with that alien. Their goal is to make sure the ship cannot be repaired. If the ship is destroyed, no one gets to leave. The astronauts are trying to repair the ship before the countdown triggers so they can get off the planet. And these forces are gonna be working against each other in a very unique way because the control of these six characters is going to pass from player to player every round. One player is going to be chosen to be the protagonist each round and they're gonna place this card in front of them. Then they're going to collect all six character cards and they're going to choose one to play. Before they start, the player to their right is going to randomly remove one, giving them a choice of five different characters they can want. This choice is made in secret. You're gonna take that character, place it face down in front of you, and then pass the deck for the next player to choose which character they wanna be. Based on the number of players you have in the game, some characters will not be chosen, and those, those characters will remain off to the side, controlled by automation. They have a ability that's gonna trigger when they're not used. 
Once everyone has chosen and revealed a character, you're going to collect the deck of cards that links to that character. And remember, I said that this deck is going to fluctuate and be changed by other players. So you might be getting a very strong deck or a very weak deck, depending on the work that's been done to this character before. In addition, you're going to take one token representing that character. This determines the amount of influence that you have over that character. And actually, you want to have the least amount of influence on a character. At the end of the game, the character that you have the least amount of tokens for is the character that you're going to inhabit for when you leave the game. And that all makes sense when I talk about the ending. Because remember, everyone has one of those secret objective cards. Now these decks are going to get passed around to the different players that are controlling the different characters. The ones that are not chosen are simply going to remain. Once that's done, you're going to trigger every character from one to six. And whoever is controlling that character is going to get to act. Now I did mention that you have a few that are set aside. They're going to act based on what's printed in their text box. But when it's your turn, you're going to have to activate your character, meaning doing whatever their global ability is. And then you're going to get to play cards from your hand in order to interact with the board. And this is how you're actually going to achieve your objective. I mentioned that there are four different locations on the board and each one of these locations is going to give you a variety of different things to do and they're going to give you different decks that you can search to make your character's deck better or potentially worse. You're going to act out your character's actions in a specific order. You're always going to be able to move first. You can play any number of gray cards from your hand in order to move that particular character across those spaces and you notice that each space has a certain requirement of movement that you need to play. Cards that are played like this are placed into the discard pile and are not used anymore for your turn. After that you can search if you're in a specific area you can search through this location deck and you can reorder it to your choice because wherever you happen to be you're going to have to draw the top card. You can choose to play more get cards to draw more of these but you're at least going to draw the top one and place it into your deck. So you can kind of set it up and determine what other players are going to uh, get on their turn. Then you can try to repair if you are in a place that needs to be repaired. Meaning if you're back here in this shuttle, you can play your wrench cards, which are the blue cards, to try to repair it. And then you can play attack cards to attack other players or fight the threat. And each attack card is going to tell you on the card specifically what it does. There's no actual... PvP combat in this game as far as you're not rolling cards or playing cards in attack or defense You're simply going to play your attack card and then something is going to happen when you're done You can reveal the cards that were remaining in your hand to take a specific action on the board Every location has a specific action or two that's going to require you to reveal a certain number of cards so for example here to place the moonlet, which is a vehicle, to place that, I'm going to have to reveal a bunch of movement cards. If I already spent my movement cards to get there, I'm not gonna have any left to reveal. So these uh, action spaces are gonna require you to build out your deck and use that deck in very specific ways. But you're going to do this for each player, and each player is going to take control of the character they're using, they're going to move them around the board and take very specific actions with them. At the end of the round, once everyone is done, everyone is going to choose a card to discard to place into the shadow threat pile or messages from the shadows. This is the evil shadows that are kind of controlling things behind the scenes that are going to either increase the threat, hurt the ship, or move that countdown timer a little closer. So you have to decide which card to play face down. You're also getting rid of a card from that player's deck. So you're, again, going to get rid of a card that you don't want in there, or maybe you're going to get rid of a card that is really good because you want that character to be a little weaker. And again, that's all going to come into play at the end of the game. But you're going to take all the cards that were discarded this way, and you're going to mix them together with the preset shadow cards that are already in every game. The first player, the protagonist, is going to shuffle them together. They're going to draw six cards and they're going to apply their effects. You're going to look at how many attack cards you placed in and you're going to move the threat down that many spaces. But you're also going to look at any of these green tentacle cards that were played and move the threat back up that many spaces. So in this case, I'd get to move the threat down by two, but it's going to come back up theoretically by one. 
You're also going to compare those weapon cards to the repair cards. Every combat card is going to deal a damage to the ship, but every one of these is going to repair it. Finally, you're going to compare the shovels to the movement cards and adjust the countdown timer that way. I've got one of each, so the countdown timer doesn't change. So you're seeing now how the cards that you discard are very important because they're going to dictate how well you can do. If you place a bunch of combat cards in here, you're going to do well against threat, but you're also going to cause some damage to the ship. And again, you have to weigh those decisions based on the cards that you want to get out of players' decks because all the cards that were revealed this way are removed from the rest of the game. And the cards that were not picked are going to go back into this pile and you're going to keep adding cards to this pile every turn. Now gameplay is going to continue around from player to player with each player going to the different locations, drawing cards to add into their decks, and building out their specific character's decks. But remember, you don't necessarily know which character you're going to be at the end of the game because as the alien you could be possessing a different character, as the guardian you could be possessing a different character, and everyone else is going to be an astronaut. So that means if you're the alien and you are trying to make sure that at the end of the game you possess a specific character, you're going to want to load up that character's deck with those green threat cards because you want them to be a threat at the end of the game. If you load up all those green threat cards and you don't get to control them, those green threat cards do nothing for you as the alien. So you're going to look at all those control markers that you took over the course of the game and each player is going to be assigned their final character once one of the game end conditions are met. That is if the threat level reaches the top, if the countdown is triggered, or if your craft is destroyed. Any one of those things happens, the game ends, then you see who actually wins the game. And to do that, the character that you're currently controlling matters. So you're going to take the deck of that character that you ended up with at the end of the game and you're going to place it in front of you. So if you took a character over and over and over again during the game in order to maybe keep on building and improving their deck and you have a bunch of those characters tokens in front of you, you're not going to get that character at the end of the game. It's going to go to the person that never picked that character at all. So you have to have a balance here and be watching what other players are doing because you want to make sure that you're possessing the right character at the end of the game. Now, the reason that this deck of cards matters is because the game can end in different ways. If the game ends by the countdown triggering, you're going to have one last chance to repair that dropship if it's not already repaired in order to get up into space to meet your ship before it leaves you behind. Every character that's being controlled by a player, so the characters that were not chosen, don't get to contribute to this. So if you're planning on repairing the ship and you've loaded a bunch of blue cards into a particular deck, you need to make sure that somebody has control of that character. But you're going to reveal all of those blue wrenches and you're going to repair the ship that number of spaces. If you reach the correct threshold, then you've managed to win the, the repair. You're going to get to launch the ship. However, the alien might still get on board. The alien player is going to reveal their deck and they're going to add all the green tentacles that they revealed to the threat track and move that threat track up. So again, if you're the alien, you want to have the deck with all of the green tentacles in it. Then every other player is going to reveal their hand and they're going to show all of the combat symbols they have and they're going to move this track back down that many spaces. But if even one threat remains, then the alien makes it onto the dropship, they escape out into the galaxy to contaminate the rest of the world. So that's very bad. That means the alien wins, everybody else loses. If for whatever reason, the astronauts could not fix the ship and the ship is not repaired, then the Guardian has succeeded in stranding everybody here. The astronauts might die, but at least the alien doesn't get to escape and so the Guardian is happy. In that case, the Guardian wins. The Guardian also wins if the ship is ever destroyed, and the alien also wins if the threat is ever at its max. So there are several different ways that each one of these factions can win. Now, if you're an astronaut, your goal is to kind of see who the other astronauts are, load up a bunch of those blue cards in whatever deck you're happening to control, and just hoping that that character with all those blue cards ends up making it to the end. But you're also going to need weapons because if it comes down to a fight between the astronauts and the alien, you need those weapon cards as well. So there's just so many different things that you have to think about. This is not a game that you're going to be able to sit down and master the first time you play it. There are a lot of different intricacies happening here with how you're going to build these decks, how you're taking these control markers, and using deduction points to try to figure out who might be which different 
objective because only one team can win. The alien is always on their own, the guardian is always on their own, and the astronauts kind of have to figure out who they are and work together in order to win the game. So there's just a lot of thinking and planning ahead that you have to do in this game. This definitely benefits from multiple plays and getting to learn all the different characters and what their decks are good at and what their special abilities are good at. So thank you for taking a look at Shadow Planet with me today. This game is coming to Kickstarter, so take a look at their Kickstarter page to see what all the final components are going to look like. Please let me know in the comments, what are you most excited about? Do you think you have a better chance as the alien or the guardian? Or would you rather play it safe as maybe one of the astronauts? So thank you so much for watching and subscribing to us here at MVM. And I will see you next time. Now, before you go, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, I hate to bring this up, but YouTube Analytics tells us to do this. So please click on the subscription button, ring the bell, watch our next video, rinse and repeat. Just keep doing that over and over and over and over.